It is Wednesday, February 3rd, 4.07 p.m. We're going to read Chapter 5 of Part 2 of Liber Eba, The Holy Oil. The holy oil is the aspiration of the magician. It is that which consecrates him to the performance of the great work. And such is its efficacy that it also consecrates all the furniture of the temple and the instruments thereof. It is also the grace of chrism, for this aspiration is not ambition, it is a quality bestowed from above. For this reason, the magician will anoint first the top of his head before proceeding to consecrate the lower centers in their turn. This oil is of a pure golden color, and when placed upon the skin, it should burn and thrill through the body with an intensity as of fire. It is the pure light translated into terms of desire. It is not the will of the magician, the desire of the lower to reach the higher, but it is that spark of the higher in the magician which wishes to unite the lower with itself. Unless, therefore, the magician be first anointed with this oil, all his work will be wasted in evil. This oil is compounded of four substances. The basis of all is the oil of olive. The olive is, traditionally, the gift of Minerva, the wisdom of God, the Logos. In this are dissolved three other oils, oil of myrrh, oil of cinnamon, oil of galangal. The myrrh is attributed to Bina, the great mother, who is both the understanding of the magician and that sorrow and compassion which results from the contemplation of the universe. The cinnamon represents Tipreth, the sun, the sun in whose glory and suffering are identical. The Galangal represents both Kether and Malkuth, the first and the last, the one and the many, since in this oil they are one. These oils taken together represent therefore the whole tree of life. The ten sephiroth are blended into the perfect gold. This oil cannot be prepared from crude myrrh, cinnamon, and Galangal. The attempt to do so only gives a brown mud with which the oil will not mix. These substances must themselves be refined into pure oils before the final combination. This perfect oil is most penetrating and subtle. Gradually it will spread itself a glistening film over every object in the temple. Each of these objects will then flame in the light of the lamp. This oil is like that which was in the widow's cruise. It renews and multiplies itself miraculously. Its perfumes fill the whole temple. It is the soul of which the grosser perfume is the body. The phial which contains the oil should be of clear rock crystal, and some magicians have fashioned it in the shape of the female breast, for that is the true nourishment of all that lives. For this reason also it has been made of mother of pearl and stoppered with a ruby.